How's it, Sean from Combat Simulation Review and Tutorial for Cauldrons of War Stalingrad? All right. So if you're interested in uh, realistic combat simulations of all eras, from ancients to modern and beyond, plus overviews, reviews, and tutorials of all these awesome sims, subscribe now and hit that notification button so that you get updated with all my content. And also like and share my videos and watch them. All right. So Cauldrons of War. This is the follow-up game to Cauldrons of War Barbarossa. It deals with the uh, Foul Blow campaign. It's Stalingrad itself and the Foul Blow campaign, uh, which is, you know, the 1942 uh, thrust by the German South into the Caucasus to, to get those uh, oil wells and that, to gain all of that, and which ended in, in, the, in the Battle of Stalingrad. So this thing covers all of that. What called Mr. Wallstein, and anybody who hasn't watched that, you should go actually watch it. I'll leave a link. I'm going to actually link that this video uh, to the Cauldrons of War uh, uh, Barbarossa, the uh, overview and tutorial. That explains the, all the mechanics of the game. So what I'm going to do with this overview and tutorial is I'm just going to go over the basic enhancements and improvements they've made and how they've changed the game. But it's the same type of game as that, except this is in 1942 and it covers that southern offensive. Now, in, an over, in a quick synopsis, what this is, is um, it's an army level combat game. It's not a, very unique. You won't find this. I mean, I looked for <clears throat> years for games that were army combat level. And most of the games are squad level. You know, right down to the squads. Then you got the hexes. Then you got core and divisions and, and all that. This is great. Those are done to death. All right? They're done to death. But they're great. I love those games. We need them. The more of them, the better. But nobody's really tackled army level combat on an army level. Not on a core level. And this game does that. It's a fantastic game. Super awesome game. You should go buy it. It's cheap. You can get it off Steam for under 100 Rand. And I'm South African. And it's such a realistic, uh, unique uh, simulation of army level combat. All right. So, Cauldrons of War. I'm going to go through. Uh, we'll just start as players the Germans. Now, these are a couple of the enhancements. If you look here. If you watch. Go watch. I'm going to leave the link as I said. Go watch that Barbarossa uh, overview. What they've done, enhanced here, is they've given you these buttons over here. Green buttons for historical choices and show the next operations. And there's a whole lot of in ton, ton of awesome improvements in this game uh, that, that were needed in the Barbarossa. But you didn't notice it because I hadn't played this one. So that, you know, you, I'm going to go through that now. So you, you, you can play either. Let me, give you, let me just go back. You can play either. Uh, Sorry, let me just go to the main menu. You can play either as the Soviets or the Germans. All right, so we're going to the Germans. Now, all of these options here are available for the Soviets as well. So you can do the early stages, Kharkov, um, Kirsch. This is this is just before they launched Operation uh, Case Blue. Um, oh, one more thing I must mention. In my link below, there's an awesome, fantastic documentary on Case Blue. Stalingrad, the whole invasion of the Caucasus by Tick History. I'm going to leave the link there down there. Go, go, go look at that video. It's one of the best videos ever made. Most detailed uh, uh, videos, uh, historical search videos on this campaign. Okay, it's such a fascinating. I love this, 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 this era, this 1942 era where the Germans were still pretty strong and the Russians were, were starting to get stronger. All right, so this is the early, this is the Kharkov. This is the offensive. This basically covers when the, a little bit, if I'm not mistaken, it's a short scenario, covers when the, the Soviets didn't know about Case Blue, but they, they ran an offensive. I think they were they were going for Kiev, or it was a Kharkov, yeah, Kharkov and Kush. They tried to assault there. They were beaten off. That's just before K, uh, foul, uh, Fall uh, Blow. Then Fall Blow covers the entire campaign from June, tw uh, June the 20th to December the 18th, 1942, of the Germans thrust down the south. And then you've got Adelwasser, uh, this is the Rostov, this is this probably, this takes it from, if I'm not mistaken, takes it from Rostov, when, when they captured Rostov, then, so it takes out the Crimea campaign, as if you're already done. So you can play it from this stage. Uranus is is uh, the uh, the actual encirclement of the uh, uh, sixth army pilots the sixth army in stalingrad this just covers that the pincer movement and getting encircled uh, over there that's operation uranus and winter G G get winter is when they try to relieve them that's that part where they try to relieve you see there's the sixth army is uh, uh, sta trapped in stalingrad and von bostein planned a daring operation to save that that was the relief effort effort and you can play 
the grand campaign but like the original game you need uh you need to unlock you need to at least win as the germans uh with eight victory points and let me tell you that's hard well it was hard if you look at my operation uh cauldrons cauldrons of war barbarossa i could i'd never won that as the germans I could basically get a draw for that entire campaign and I got hammered in all the other campaigns. It was much easier to play as the Soviets. Now you also need to win at least eight victory points. It doesn't say whether it's the German or the or the Soviets, but you need eight. So it's a tough, tough game. Tough, tough game. Because it doesn't, it's not like you can see a map. Are you with me? It's not like you can, I'm going to show it to you now. It's not like you can see a map where you can place your armies and there's hexes and stuff where you can move and there's, there's, there's viable kilometers you know about. It's all abstracted in an army level combat uh, simulation. So you've got to think abstractly. You've got to try and remember, okay, did I advance? Huh? You've got to keep all that in your mind. It's an awesome game. Fantastic game. One of the best. If not, it's the only game that I know that's made for army level combat. And uh, yeah, and then just to get up now, you also get Stalingrad, the entire Stalingrad fight, the whole city fight. And that's what it's named after, Stalingrad. All right, so let's go to Fall Blow. Let's just see. I'm going to keep these all ticked. Let's see what changes they were made. I'm not going to read all this. When I do the actual playthrough, I'll go through all the, uh, the, the details. You get these screens. If you watch my original overview, this is how it is. Every time you play a turn, you might get choices, hard decisions to make, and all this type of stuff towards your victory, towards your uh, offensive. Now, this is also pretty nice. This They've added the conquest of the Caucasus 10 points. And Barkov five points, and this other place three points, and Grozny and uh, Mayakop uh, one point each. So you can see uh, they did the same thing in Operation Barbarossa, the same uh, uh, thing. Uh, this is they've just highlighted it nicely here. And you need at least six points to achieve the victory, and all of that. So they've highlighted it nice, they've done a decent job. Uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, this they give you if you. You lose victory points for the following. So you can also lose points for, you know, these areas like Slomensk. If you lost a Slomensk, you'll lose points. So you're winning and you're getting points. Okay, I'm going to carry on. I'm just going to say we need the equipment so I can just get to the main screen to show you the differences and the changes. Okay, so the map looks pretty much the same, but there's a whole ton of different things. That option is still the same where you can see, you know, the, the, you, it, it shows you the, the, the flags for the, for, the, for the troops. But here's a new one. We, is it this one? Is it this one? Yeah. Now you can see each, each uh, front, each army group, army group north. You can see immediately, it tells you how many trucks they have, and it tells you the rail capacity, and it tells you each front, you can see on the map before you had to click inside there to go and look now you can see at a glance on the map where where uh, what how, how many how much rail each front has now remember your rail is your overall amount to supply each one of these and in each front there's also a rail capacity as well that you can't oversupply so and and the trucks help you with that but i'm not going to go into that all that detail with you uh, when i play through here you'll I'll, we'll go through all this and you'll understand how it's working. I'm just wanting, I'm just hoping you get the gist of this. Then you've got your weather as normal, which is great. But here's the thing which I think is a huge improvement. You see, when I press this flag, you see that this lists all my victory conditions. Now, this was never, uh, sorry, let me just get there so you can get a better. This was never in the Operation Cauldrons of War Barbarossa. You had to just, there was no progress bar. You couldn't find out if it was 10 points to get an area like Kiev or whatever. You had to just capture it and you didn't know if you captured it. You knew you captured it, but you had to... I, I said when I played this game, I actually wrote this stuff all down. You know, the victory points. And then I knew when I captured Kharkov or Kiev or whatever, that's how much points I got. But you never saw any visual representation or any tally box. And no indication on the map where your objectives are. So you had to write them down. What's great about this, and I think they listen to the guys, here are all your victory objectives. There they all are. So you know immediately where you need to go. You know, there's no worried about having to look on your on a piece of paper and then figure out, oh, geez, where am I now? You understand? Where do I need to go now? It's all here. And I love that they added. This is something I was hoping they would add. And it's something that I... I, I missed in the original in the original campaign. So there you can keep your victory objectives on. 
Now, this is also great. HQs, you can list all your HQs in a nice, nice uh, column, whatever, yeah. And you can see immediately how many planes and troops and trucks each HQ, Army Group North, of their main strategic HQ has. And all these other items like the siege and then the sieges, what, what percentage of those sieges are done, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see that. So that's hell of a nice. Um, and now let's look, let's go in and look and see how they've, what I feel is about. Also, another thing, you can see future operations, which is great. If you highlight on, say, a front, you, you don't get anything in view. But if I highlight on that front, you see those arrows that are spreading out. You see going down there. These are future operations. So if you take this, as far as I know, if you, if you take, and I haven't yet played through Stalingrad, if you take this, you, you'll, you'll be offered these two. These are the places where you can go. So you can see ahead where you can plan. Do you understand? You can see ahead. And you can also get an idea. It looks like these are the Soviet, the Soviet also advancements coming down there. So, yeah, that's brilliant as well. That really, really helps a lot on the map. Now, let me just go on the side before I go in and show you some more. There is a very cool enhancement. Really, I think what a huge improvement inside these, these fronts. I'm going to show that to you now now. But I just want to show you here on the side here. If you look by my mouse here, it says the, the barbarism is 30. That's always been there. Now you see access cohesion and Moscow focus. This is new. And I'm going to show it to you now. Um, let me go in here. I think I can see it over here. Okay, there it is. Uh, access cohesion. Now, I'll just read this because this is what's different. The March East was not triumphant. Germans' allies were increasingly preoccupied with their own national interests. Among the troops, the lack of consideration on the part of the Germans and the setbacks of the Allied for Axis forces are bad signs to soldiers who wonder what, they, what they're doing so far from home and fighting in a war not of their own. Now, diplomatic effects on coercion. The higher the Axis coercion score, the more the Finns more that the Finns or even the Turks are likely to acti actively participate alongside you. And then it gives you what you need to know about that. Axis cohesion store is, is, is smaller than 25. Non-German Axis troops lose their cohesion more easily. So this is added in another set of factors. And you've got these other, other uh, things for that Axis cohesion. So, cohesion. so it adds another set of factors and, and deepens the campaign hugely. Now the focus on Moscow. Moscow is still under threat from fascists. Moscow is not only a strong symbi symbolic objective, it's also the hub of the Soviet rail network. If Moscow is taken, the North could not hold out, well, could not hold out for long. The ferocity with which the enemy defended the Revere's uh, salient can only have one cause. He intends to use it as a spring springboard to, to Moscow as soon as the good weather returns. Okay. Now, it tells you what, what the indications of this are, what the implications. A kremlin focus score represents the Stavka's belief in a main offensive towards Moscow and is displayed on the right-hand side of the map. As long as the score is positive, the player cannot move units to the south, southwest, Crimean front, and all this type of thing. So when he's seeing it, you see, it's displayed it to the right. So basically, this is adding, like, this is saying, there it is. As long as it's positive, the Soviets, and as far as I understand it, are believing that you that they don't know about this operation. They're unaware, as they were. They actually, Stalin actually thought that the the Germans in 1942 would thrust towards Moscow. So this just represents or simulates the belief that the, the Russians didn't know that. And as long as that stays positive, okay, above zero, then they can't send certain troops down here. I'm hoping explaining that's how I see it. That's another enhancement that's been that that's improved in this game. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic enhancement. If you look in here, this is all still the same. If you go watch my uh, Barbarossa, oh no, uh, uh, I'll get back to. I'm actually looking for the. Sorry, let me just go to the center. This is what I'm looking for. You see, the HQs are still the same inside. Yeah, and you you got this list. But here's the thing. I can switch this to the AI. I can give AI control of this. I can give it over to the AI, that entire front. So as you see there, where it's got this ball like this, that means I can forget about this front. I, I, can, I can put this guy, this front, also the, the uh, Army Group North, also on the AI. 
And then I can just concentrate on this. And the AI would take charge of this entire front. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that a fantastic feature? So, because uh, you also have to maintain this front, obviously, if you're going to strike down south. You understand. But this just enables you, and you can do it here too. It's unbelievable. I didn't, I didn't know, but you can do it there as well. So I can also, on this front here, I can also delegate this entire, this entire uh, Crimean front or the, the army group south. I can give, I can delegate that to the AI, and the AI will now take charge of all moving the units, fighting the units, the objectives, everything. Isn't that weird? Isn't that fantastic? I mean, who would have thought of them coming up with that? I mean, there we go. And that's such a welcome thing because this game, I promise you, can get complicated. And it's nice to be able to... Let me just take them off. It's nice to be able to uh, delegate some of this stuff to the AI, especially the fronts you're not interested in. And he can maybe defend them for you. This is also new, where you can just see on the map. You can see the guy. I think this is still the same. I think it's I think it's still the same. You could see on the map where you are. But this AI, delegated AI, is fantastic. You can delegate your entire your entire uh, 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 army group center, north or south, to to the AI. Brilliant. Now let's look at uh, if uh, for more. Let's look at some other things. Now here as well, you can also now look on the map. If I'm not mistaken, I played this a, about a month or so ago. The operation. Called it a war. You can always correct me. Um, you always saw the picture here, but you could never see where the front was on the map, and this enables you to see it. And that's basically that's basically in a nutshell all the changes they've made. Uh, there are there's nothing. Let me just get to the wiki. Uh, there are a few things like this Mastrov uh, Mas I can't pronounce that. This is a new sort of other action you can use in, in this game. They've added a new faction, a new sort of action there that I don't remember seeing before. Otherwise, everything is still... There is night attack. That's the first time. That's mainly, I suppose, for Stalingrad. It says in Stalingrad, the Soviets can become experts. So that's mainly for Stalingrad. So you've got a few... There's not... There's, this has basically stayed the same, which I'm very happy with because otherwise it becomes a whole new learning curve. Are you with me? Then we're going to sit and learn this whole thing again. I'm glad that they've just done they've just done a few minimal changes here. Like they've added that for and then they um, claim this unit is also new. I'm not sure if this is for Stalingrad or uh, or Case Blau or the operations or the campaigns, but it's a new one. And uh, mass this mass this is also new. A unit camouflaged with this action cannot be bombed and benefits from the bonus on its first combat. I'm assuming this is for the Stalingrad. Because the Stalingrad is a city fight. And I'll show that to you before we leave. Otherwise, everything is the same. Barrier troops, shoot the trader. There's nothing here that's other, has changed otherwise besides that. Okay, so let's just go back. Your operations are still the same. The game's still up. The game's still... And it's got this, I saw this as well, which is also quite unique, obsolete armament. This unit is equipped with out outdated equipment. Its equipment is undoubtedly uh, un uh, undoubtedly fit for 1939, but is no longer sufficient to face a modern army. Okay, so basically, that's just that. That's new. That's new. And I don't, I think that's mainly for the Romanian forces. I don't think that, that applies to anyone else, but it's nice that they've added all that in there. Uh, your point systems are still the same. All of this, your cursion, and uh, and then your your basic, your refit, and your fronts and your cast your case case blow that you can take on. So basically, the game's still the same. So I'll just play a couple of moves just to. I think I'll just play one turn so we can get an idea of this. Okay, so here I'm going to. Oh, and oh, before I forget, there is a, there is a, there is a thing where you can see, now this is your, I'm not actually sure what that is, but it, okay, no, that's your aeroplanes. Now you can see air, air superiority. You see that when you highlight that, that shows you air superiority. Yeah. Okay. That's also new. That's also been added. All right. So let's just take that off. I'll just play a, just play it. It turned, what I'll do is I'll just put these guys all on, uh, these guys up here, I'll put them on, so 
So you can just get an idea of the flow. And I'll keep north and south on AI. And I'll I'll, I'll put the Crimea as well on AI. So let's just see if AI can take care of that. And we know we've got two operations here. So let's start with that operation. Let's do a breakthrough. And we've got five points to spare. Um, let's bring these guys to the front. And now I'm just playing. I'm not really... And let's do an assault. Okay, so we did make the same story here as you watch that. If you watch my series, I played through the whole Operation Barbarossa, Cold of Wars. You can watch that to see how this all plays out. And there you go. And you're able then, and you, you gain advancement. Your, your, um, you, as you, as you break the enemy, uh, as you break his armies, you then gain like progress toward and once that operation is finished then you 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 present it with the with other operations so you can see it's not x space it's army level combat i mean this is the 17th army there are cores and divisions yeah you can split this up but as you see i did an assault um if i can just give you an idea of the north south let's just say i'm gonna do a blitz over here i've got access control uh let me give you an idea i'm gonna use this to do a blitz Okay, so I'm isolated now. So basically, and I'm going to reverse the front. So that means do the blitz, go deep into enemy and turn back down. And I've got no more points. Okay, so that's, and then I've got, I've got no more points there and I've got no more points over here. So, because I put the AI under control. So just, just to give you an idea of the flow and how they, and you'll see that I probably haven't pr uh, progressed. Oh, 28%. Okay. So basically, that's really how you play the game. You get these operations. You have a Kessel there. You have various... Um, I've yeah, I've actually surrounded the 9th Army. Okay, good, as you see there. So you get various things you can do with your troops. Let me see if I can see over here. You get various options where you can counterattack, headshot, and each option has various advantages and disadvantages, and it's all fought in this front. So, for example, if I take, okay, he's in reserve, I can refit him, I can bring him to the front, but if I take him, this tank, and I hit a blitz, okay, and he then, what happens is how this game sort of functions is I hit a blitz, so I break through and I get behind enemy lines, but I'm cut off and isolated. If I reverse the front, I come back and attack him. If I withdraw and all your troops can assault your uh, assault enemy positions, so... This is how it plays out. And within these moves that you have presented and his replies to those moves and what he does, this whole area is fought out within this. It's abstract because there's no hexes. You understand? So you've got to kind of think, if I assault him with uh, Blitz, I'm going behind enemy lines. I need to, you know, either I withdraw, but if you withdraw, you lose progress in the campaign. But if I don't, I can raid further. But I might get isolated and, and stuck. I, if I reverse my front, I turn around and come back. So if I if I if I go to do the blitz and I isolate him, I might cut off some of his units. And if I assault those units, then I th then he's isolated and I and I I've got him encircled. So you got to think in terms of large army combat when you play this game. My overview on the uh, uh, Barbarossa Coldness of War. You must go watch. I'm very in depth in that. All right, so let's just make, let's, we've done this. We finished our turns. I did an assault. I'm going to hit the next turn. Okay, so just to give you the flow of it. So what usually happens is when you hit the next turn, a lot of times you get events. Like you saw in the beginning when I first loaded up and it's, and it gives you choices. Uh, do I want to attack now? Do, you know, various choices. Do I want to change my axis of attack? Do I want to create a new front? And there's decisions you've got to make which is way, you're weighing up stuff because there's consequences for each decision. Now, as you play this, you get these those choices as you go along, which we really tough decisions. Now, for example, I now, when I open up the front and the second, I see what he's done. So basically, he's retreated. He lost five. We've got 5% on the progress and he retreated over there, right? And then we carry on with our turn. Uh, we can see what happened here. He assaulted the second panzer with the uh, the versus the forty eighth army. Um, this is what he did, remember? Because I put him under AI control. Remember, this is uh, this is the this is the army group center. So this is what he then went and did, and you can see the log. 
the walking log of what he did in the turn. You understand? So if I go, yeah, you'll see what he did, or what the what the what the Soviets have done, and versa vice, and they've gained air superiority, and it gives you a nice walking log, just like the original game, but with all this new enhancements. And and then you've got these new focuses to worry about as well. And the great is you've got the great news. You've got all these um, victory points available. Awesome, awesome game. Go buy it. It's worth every penny. It's not even worth a lot. I mean, it's under 100 Rand. I bought this both. Well, I don't know what now. I haven't looked on Steam, but I bought this both. I'm going to be doing a playthrough on my channel soon. I'm just busy at the moment. I just I have to, I'm I'm having to find the time because I've got already three games that I'm concentrating on, and I'm. And I'm doing these overviews, so I don't want to do too many videos on my channel. Then I'm clogged up and I can't breathe. So it's coming. This is coming on my channel, definitely. I love this game to bits. I had such an awesome... Go watch the the, the Cauldrons of War, uh, uh, Barbarossa. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go back to the main campaign because I just want to show you the Stalingrad setup. Because this is the only... This is one of the unique... So I picked Stalingrad and I launched that. Okay, so you get all your points and your victory points and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pick a i'm just gonna choose an option now here you're actually fighting in the stalingrad in the towns in the city you you are you you are you with me now you're actually fighting and it's like like where those were fronts where you saw k's blow where they were fronts where you were going down and you get this is the same sort of thing i'm assuming because i haven't played it the same sort of thing but now this is in districts different districts that of Stalingrad that you need to conquer or get to and you've got all your bits and pieces plays probably a little bit different there's your HQs up there and you obviously have all your moves that you can take as well and I think the wiki I'm not sure if the wiki um, let's just go to school okay so I went in there now I can add sappers I can add so this is a rank up in complexity because it now becomes not army level combat, combat, but more small level combat, as you can see. And you've got all of these different things that you can now do. I'm not sure if there's a wiki to explain all of this. Um, let me just cancel that. Let's just see if there's a wiki, if they've left a wiki. Then you've got your, it looks like, a, and you've got all of these things on the sign and your command points. This is going to have a, 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 quite a bit of uh, learning involved, but I don't see... I don't see any wikis here, so you are probably you probably are gonna have to just play it by trial and error because there's no wikis on this, and in the wiki it doesn't tell you that. Anyway, that's just to give you an idea of of the the game when it comes to the the Stalingrad scenario, which is the fight the 15 days fighting in the whole city, and obviously each each uh, let's go back to the main menu each. Um, each district is now like a front and you can see it's got quite a bit of more complex complexity in it all right you can also play as the soviets you can do the exact same thing as the soviets there is a uh, i'm just going to mention this again before i leave i think i've covered everything i know that i didn't get into detail with this if you want specific details i've played through uh cordon's war opera uh, barbarossa as i've said many times i've done a complete overview where i go through all the bits of the mechanics and I played through all the scenarios as the Soviets and as the Germans. So you can watch there uh, the flow of the play. This was just basically to show you the enhancements, the improvements, what they've added to it. And a little bit of how the game uh, plays as well. And a little bit of the features they've added. I think they've done a fantastic job here. Um, I'm really excited to play this. And I love this game to bits. I think it's a fantastic game. It's just, you know, the problem is it's just not enough games to play. I mean, you want to play everything, and you love all genres, and you can't play everything. You can only play certain things. If you if you try and play every game on the plane, you're going to die. You're going to just go psycho. So you can't do that. So you've got to try and manage your time. And this is the game I'm going to come. I'm going to play on my on my channel soon, when I get the time to finish what I'm doing at the moment. Fantastic game, a game off the charts. The reviews on Steam are, like, favorable, very favorable. And it's one of those hidden gems, if you're into this type of warfare. One of those hidden gems. And who wouldn't be? Army level combat. Come on. All right, I think I covered everything. I, I'm sure I've missed, uh, missed stuff out, and I'm sure I haven't done this justice. I mean, there must be a few mistakes I made as well. 
So, you know, just bear with me on that. I'm also learning this game, even though I know it's it's fundamentally there's a few things that are different uh, that I have to get used to as well. But basically, I kind of know how the game uh, plays. All right, Sean from Combat Simulations, please subscribe to my channel. It's free. I mean, if you're interested in, in historical war games, realistic combat simulations, history and historical war games, um, ancients, right from the ancients to modern warfare and more and, and, and beyond, tutorials, overviews and tips that I do on my channel, that this is the channel for you. So please subscribe. Leave comments, leave suggestions. If you ask questions, you give me tips, I'd be very appreciative. And also uh, like my videos and watch them and... Um, yeah, like, watch, and, and share, and share. Very important to watch my videos. Watch, watch this thing helping. Helps me a lot because that helps me, help, enables me to do more of this content that I love. All right, um, Sean from Combat Simulations. Until our next overview tutorial, next uh, video on my channel, good day on you.